What's up everybody? Welcome to Rex Engine. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about setting up melee attacks. Rex Engine gives you a ton of options for how to set up melee attacks and how to animate them and how to make them interact with the world, so I wanted to go over some of those here and give you guys ideas for how you can implement those in your own game. So by default, um, any character we create from the player template is going to have this wrench slash attack. So what I'd like to do in this video is change the wrench slash into a Castlevania style whip attack. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is let's make a new player character from the template. So I'm going to go into the Rex palette, which if you don't have that open, it's under Window, Rex Engine, Rex Palette. And I'm going to click the button to create a new character uh, using the player template. So this gives us a fresh player character to work with. And if we open this guy up and look inside his options, we can see one of the game objects underneath it is called attack. So I'm going to click on attacks, and we can see there's a melee attack and a projectile attack, which we're not going to worry about for this video. So for the time being, I'm going to delete the melee attack, click on the player game object, go to tools, Rex engine, add attack, add melee attack. And this is going to give us a fresh melee attack to work with, which out of the box, I believe is going to be the same wrench attack that we saw before. So if we open that up, we can see it's got a sprite inside it where we can slot a new sprite. Um, and then if we click on the melee attack itself, we're going to see a lot of options in the inspector. So under the attack component, we can see there are slots here for the actor animations, which are the animations that play on the player character when they perform the attack. So in this case, it's the character waving his arm as he slashes the wrench or whatever. And then we have slots here for the attack animations, which in this case would be the wrench itself. So that's, you know, the sword or the whip or whatever the actual weapon is that you're using. This is where you can slot in different animations and those animations will play automatically whenever you attack while, while also doing one of these secondary actions. So for example, the standing slot here, this is the attack animation that plays if you attack while standing. And the moving slot here is if you attack while moving, and dashing, jumping, climbing, crouching, wall, cl wall clinging, stair climbing, and so on and so forth. So all of these, you can just drop an animation clip into the slot, and it will automatically play the appropriate animation when you attack in that circumstance. Uh, so moving right along, we have this whole field here is called actions allowed during attack. So this is, if you're already attacking, this is what other actions can you perform while the attack is in progress. Um, so whether or not you can move while you're attacking, whether or not you can jump out of the attack, turn, uh, perform other attacks out of that attack, and the list goes on. So any of these checkboxes, all you have to do is check the appropriate box, and it will basically enable or disable you to perform those actions while in the middle of this attack. Cancelled by is a section for actions that are cancelled, or actions that will cancel this attack, rather. Um, so on move, for example, is if you're doing the attack and then you check on move, that will stop the attack. It'll cancel the attack when you move. Or this would cancel the attack if you jump, and so on and so forth. Cancels is uh, uh, it's actions that the attack would cancel. So for example, you would click this, and if you're dashing, and then you attack, the dash would be cancelled. So this is for the section for other things that the attack itself would cancel. And then can initiate from is different sections for where you can perform the attack. So if you want the player to not be able to attack while standing still, for example, you would uncheck this box. Um, or as we're going to see in a minute to give it that Castlevania feel, we're going to make it so you can't initiate the attack while you're moving. Attack input importance, um, you can set this to either primary or sub or both. 
this is basically the button that you need to press to initiate the attack. So if it's on the primary attack button, or the sub attack button, or if it's on both. Cooldown frames is the amount of time between the attack. So if it's set to zero, you can just spam that button press and rapid fire the attack. But if we set it to something like 60, then it would be one second between when you can attack. Um, auto enable collider is whether or not the attack's collider comes on automatically when the attack is performed. Um, and everything else here, we can wait on, on that. So now that we've gone through those, um, let me walk you through some other components on this really quick. We've got a box collider, which basically this is what's going to collide with enemies or destructible terrain or whatever to attack those. It's got its own animator. Um, it's got a rigid body mostly for reporting collisions. And then it has a script on it called contact damage, where we can set how much damage the attack does. And we can determine if the attack will damage the player or enemies, or both. So to skin this as a Castlevania whip, um, I've got some graphics already set up here. And I'm just going to go onto the sprite of this attack. We can see it's got its sprite renderer here. And I'm just going to drag and drop a frame of this whip attack onto this. And I'm going to slot in an animator for an animation of a whip that I've made as well. So then if you recall earlier, we were talking about all of these different slots for the actor animations and the attack animations. So I'm just going to slot in the animations I've got for the whip and for the player swinging the whip into these slots. I'm not sure where our whip sprite went, but let me drag that back in there really quick. So let's see if we've got this animation playing properly now. All right, first try. <laughs> Um, so now that we've got the animation working, the next thing we want to do is mess with the box collider. So the box collider component, again, is right there on the melee attack game object. And this is just using Unity's regular box collider interface, so there's nothing special we have to do here. Um, but I'm just going to set this to be about the size of the whip graphic. Um, yeah, that looks about right. And I'm actually going to test this out during gameplay to make sure we get the offset correct. There we go. Um, yeah, actually, this is pretty good. So we can see now, basically, the box collider is surrounding the sprite itself, so there won't be any, any problems with the collision. Um, so now if we crouch and try and attack, um, we enabled all of that, and we set an animation for it and everything over here. But the only thing is that we want to offset it a little bit. Like we can see right now, if we attack while standing and while crouching, the whip is in the same place. Um, so fortunately, there's an option for that. And that is the crouch offset on the attack component. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.25. I think that should be about right to bring the whip down just by 0.25 units. So it'll be slightly lower when we're crouching. Yeah, it looks about right. And so we're actually almost there. Um, there's only a couple more things I want to do. Is to give it that classic Castlevania feel. We want to make sure that it's a little bit rigid and that we can only attack in certain circumstances.
So right now, for example, we have it enabled while moving. And what we should do is make sure the player cannot move and attack at the same time. Um, so I'm going to uncheck actions allowed during attack ground moving. Um, I think air moving for the time being will leave that on. And I think that should do it actually. There we go, so every time we attack now, even if we're moving, it stops us. And if we're attacking, we can't move again until the attack is finished. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys, um, so we went over the cooldown frames. We can determine how quickly the attack comes out. Er. So if I set this to a really low number, like 5, we can sort of rapid fire that attack. If I set it to something really high, like 120, it's going to be a couple seconds between attacks. And we have this button here for requires fresh button press. Now this is basically whether or not we have to press the button every time the attack comes out, or if this is unchecked, we can hold down the button to spam the attack. So I'm going to set the cooldown frames to something low, like 30, it should be half a second, and take off fresh button press and just hold down the attack button. And now we can see that even though I'm not repeatedly pressing the button, it's still coming out repeatedly. And so that's it for this video. There's some other stuff that I want to go over in future videos, like setting up combos or projectile attacks, but we'll do those another day. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you next time.